All right, so as I introduced in a previous video, I'm going to calibrate this Radio Shack 22-163 uh, cheap uh, multimeter uh, with a voltage, current, and uh, resistance uh, reference. Uh, and just for fun, I'm going to tear it down and see what it looks like inside. Batteries fell out. Ah. Here at Spagamoto Industries, we use only the most advanced battery retention technologies in all of our products and test gear. And just for fun, let's see how this thing is built. So it's a mixture of good and bad. Remember, uh, this thing is a real budget device from, you know, Radio Shack, so don't expect too much. But anyways, what I do like about it, it actually has some shielding, <laughs> which is good. Um, the uh, terminals here, the jacks, are pretty well made. There's a lot of solder holding it all into place, and it's on its own little riser board with uh, nice interconnects here. So the strain and the stress from plugging in your terminals uh, it looks to be uh, correctly handled. The uh, current shunt uh, is actually insulated, so that is definitely good. Uh, and it looks like we have a uh, PTC right here. Uh, which is also good. Uh, now the things that I don't really like about it, well, there isn't much input protection if I'm honest. Um, and well, look at this. These wires here, really, really thin ones, going to the buzzer down there, see it? Right there. They're just soldered directly to little jumpers. So, <laughs> forget pads or anything like that, just solder it right to the jumper. And you've got this little wire here. I'm not sure what it's doing. It's just kind of linking two areas of the board. I guess they couldn't, uh, I don't know. I have no idea why they would do that. And, uh, well, a lot of the parts are just kind of flopping around there. This teeny tiny little crystal here is, again, just flopping around. It looks like it was glued down at one point, but the glue has completely come apart. And, uh, okay, so that's enough about that side. Oh, and there's this thing here. I'm not sure why they soldered this here. Uh, maybe they had a good reason, but it's just like kind of soldered halfway through the current shunt, so I'm not sure what they're trying to do. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, take this thing a bit further apart. Uh, I've already figured out what I need to figure out, uh, by the way, so there's no real reason to take this all the way apart, but I will anyway for fun. Anyways, this is the uh, AC voltage. You can see it says ACV down there, and here it says DCV, DC volts. So that's pretty easy to adjust. And the back of the board is uh, nothing surprising. Uh, this is an Epson uh, SMC 621M1F. Uh, uh, that will just be a integrated multimeter controller. I'm sure there's no other, uh, you know, fancy chips on here. Uh, ignore this. This is was my repair way back in the day, probably in, I don't know, middle school or something. I managed to explode uh, the current trace on the board here. Um, <laughs> yes, I did the classic trick of taking the fuse and wrapping it in aluminum foil, which, uh, you know, ended about as you'd expect. I have learned, though, uh, but anyways, these contacts uh, were actually plated with gold, I believe. Um, Looks like I've sanded those. I have no idea what I was doing back then. But uh, anyways, this thing still works, so uh, let's bring it back up to Cal. Well, this is interesting. I never noticed this before. You see how the corner of uh, this little plastic thing is ground off? And uh, none of the other corners are? Well, <laughs> if you look there, you see R12 right there? The little blue resistor? <laughs> it uh, hit, hits this thing unless uh, that thing is ground off and it looks by the scoring marks on there it looks like it was ground off after the fact and so after uh, this thing was molded so it looks like someone screwed up in the uh, communication department again just for fun let's see what its uh, current consumption is this is on uh, microamp range awesome almost nothing and uh, let's try turning it on. That blip was just me touching things that I shouldn't. So let's turn this thing on. Oh. 
not even a milliamp. That is awesome. Let's see what it uh, takes when it's measuring a resistance. All right, not bad at all. 1.4 milliamps. This thing could run forever. I approve. All right, so I've got my uh, voltage reference there. This is the pot that I need to adjust. DC volts, I'm not going to bother with AC volts because I very rarely use that. So yeah, right now it's reading a bit high. Let's tweak it. Well, that's as close as I care to make it. Next. Alright, the uh, current measurement is also pretty darn close. Jumps around a bit. Well, the ohms range doesn't seem to have fixed itself. Uh, this is supposed to be 999.8, but uh, it's not. But uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of adjustment for ohms range, so uh, I might be screwed here. And this one's supposed to be 9.995k. And this one's supposed to be 100.08. Oh well, uh, I probably won't be using this one for any serious resistance measurements anyway. I mean, <laughs> it's clearly not uh, cut out for high resolution work or high accuracy work. It's just my backup. Alright, that concludes this little segment. Thanks for watching. Uh, next, I will do the BK Precision 2706A multimeter, and I will show you a little trick for finding out what knobs do what in uh, these meters where they're undocumented. Alright, see you next time.